Chain Group was born out of the nighttime closure of Grantham A&E. After much research, day in, day out, we realised that it was part of a massive reconfiguration of the NHS, which will see our NHS downsized, reduced, rationed, in order to encourage people to go private and bring in an Americanised insurance-based system. I am a nurse of nearly 30 years um, and a recovering cancer patient. The NHS has saved me and now it's time for the NHS to be saved back. I have kept quiet for 30 years. I am not keeping quiet anymore. We keep getting told that the A&E will reopen when it is safe to do so. It's not safe not open. I've been uh, in the NHS for 41 years. 30 years of that was in charge of the accident emergency department at Grantham Hospital. The United Lincolnshire Hospital has always wanted to try and close our services and for many years I fought against that on occasions I would be suspended or I'd be disciplined uh, really just trying to maintain those services. What they've been doing is closing the service at night time and trying to move patients to other areas. During the night time that's when patients with diabetes, with asthma, with cardiac problems frequently attend the accident emergency department and um, their condition deteriorate because they hang on and hang on not wanting to burden the service and when they do arrive they require emergency intervention. What they don't need is waiting for an hour for an ambulance to arrive and then going along to an accident emergency department and sent elsewhere. Mr. Chakrabarti, my a &E consultant, who had collapsed at home with a stroke, was left for over an hour on the floor as he deteriorated, waiting for an ambulance to arrive. The a &E department was only five minutes away. When the ambulance arrived and they took him then past the a &E department at Lincoln, another hour away, um, he sadly deteriorated and died uh, when he arrived there. Now that two hours that the ambulance service spent travelling back and forth could have been better utilised saving other lives instead of allowing him to die because of a very poor service. Apparently we are all going to A&E just for the hell of it because I get bored on a Sunday afternoon, I'm sure you do, and we just think, yeah, yeah, let's go and sit in A&E. You know, the percentage of people that are actually doing that is actually really, really small. And don't believe all the propaganda that you hear. Do not believe what they're telling you, it's rubbish. There are consultants waiting uh, with no theatre to run because they have no staff or because they have no beds in which to put those patients. Um, we've had consultants that have turned up for theatre knowing that they have four or five patients on their list and there are no patients there. Only to find out that those patients um, to try and save waiting times we moved out to have the surgery in private hospitals. Uprising was born in Louth. They had their protest march on the 2nd of September against the closure of their hospital, um, which is in the same sustainability and transformation plan as the downgrade of Grantham A&E. Our hospital was once a great hospital. We had everything you could want in your community. Now we have an urgent care centre. Mm. That happened when our A&E was initially closed overnight. You can't go there if you're having a heart attack. You can't go there if you've got an allergic reaction. We've even lost audiology, ophthalmology. Everything has just about gone. Once your A&E goes, then there'll be lots of other departments that'll go. Because without the A&E, you won't be getting the traffic to those departments. It will happen at Grantham if you let it. The council decision to reject the sustainability and transformation partnership for our county, we were told the rejection that the councillors had made was actually irrelevant. That was the terminology that we were afforded by the East Commissioning Group. The NHS England are going to push through these horrific plans regardless. These people that we've voted in to positions of power for us, to speak for us, even their voices are not being heard. So I suggest we sh start shouting a damn sight louder. You will not achieve anything by staying just local. You have to know that it's a national directive which is doing this. This winter really is another of those momentous moments in our history. If we, the people, do not follow the uprising and really get on the streets, really demand of our councillors and our MPs, we will lose the NHS. What's coming this winter is something called the Accountable Care Organisation. The STPs, all 44 of them around the country, have all said they want to head towards being an accountable care organisation. This is an American model, private health insurance, 
backed up by a very poor Medicare and Medicaid model. So if you think about the way dentists now work, that's what we want, that's what NHS England are trying to head towards. There'll always be an NHS logo, but it'll be the minimum. If you want proper treatment, you're going to have to start paying for it. They want to cut £22 billion pounds over the next few years from the health service. In Nottinghamshire, it's £627 million. Pounds. You can't do that and pretend to improve services. They're going to bring in limits to what's available. It's forcing CCG's hospital trusts to become like an insurance company. I've been involved in the campaign for the saving the Lincolnshire Walking Centre in Lincoln, which many people use instead of A&E, which is the only walking centre in the whole of Lincolnshire. Um, so that covers seven, 740,000 people. 105 patients a day when the walking centre closes after the winter crisis will have to find alternative provision. A lot of that alternative provision will be going up to Lincoln A and E. The same as you at night having to go to Lincoln A and E. Lincoln A and E had a crisis in July where they were telling people not to go unless it was an emergency. That crisis, they pointed people to the walk-in centre as the alternative provision. What happens when the walk-in centre closes? Nottingham hospitals were on black alert two weeks ago because there were no emergency beds. Where do you go if your a and is closed in uh, Grantham? If you don't go to Lincoln, you go to Nottingham. There are no beds there. We saw recently an example of a baby being in an A&E with meningitis and it wasn't seen for six and a half hours. The congenital heart centre at Glenfield Hospital in Leicester is a regional centre. Children who are born with heart problems in this area have to go to Glenfield for emergency treatment, for operations and so on. There were three in the country that were under threat of closure. Glenfield, the Royal Brompton and Harefield, one in London and also in Manchester. NHS England now, after delaying and delaying and delaying, have a board meeting on the 30th of November where they will announce whether the congenital heart service will close. Because of the delay, the one in Manchester has actually collapsed because staff there felt it was going to close anyway and they looked elsewhere for jobs. If they announce on the 30th of November that they intend to close the Glenfield Heart Centre, we will be protesting in Leicester on the 9th of December, Saturday the 9th of December, and you'd be all welcome to come and join us there. Last year in County Durham, we marched between eight hospitals which are under threat, some of which have already lost many services over the last 10 years. The same process is happening everywhere with the same stories of lies being told. Emergency closures are being proposed and we are told this is only temporary, but this is a lie. They told us it didn't matter that they were going to take away services at Hartlepool because they were going to build a new super hospital. That turned out to be lies. Don't believe them when they say if they merge hospitals they can give you something shiny and new. All you will get are closures and the community services they will promise you just don't exist. When we reached the end of our march and got to Darlington, we got the news that the legal consultation had been postponed and there still hasn't been a consultation on the closure. That is why I believe the plans can be resisted and the fight can be won. It is so, so important that in the fight for our hospitals and our NHS, we don't allow the commissioners and the powers that be to play hospitals and towns off each other because that will only mean that the closures prevail. Nottinghamshire at the end of July announced the war closure in Mansfield Community Hospital. They got the CCG to come to a public meeting in the hospital with the patients there. That was so important because they couldn't get to a public meeting outside the hospital. They were cornered in that hospital and they've had to put back that closure date until they provide an alternative. They've also promised not to victimise staff who stand up for patients. We need to build unity of everyone involved in all of these campaigns in order to save our National Health Service. We are all like the character of Hamlet right now. We are facing a huge moral decision. Do we let the NHS be or do we let it not be? Do we fight to save it or do we let it go? We are the sixth richest country in the world. We can afford it now more than we've been able to afford it in the past. 
at the time it was founded, the country was bankrupt. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Now we have been suffering those slings and arrows for way too long. How are we going to be able to look our grandchildren in the eye and tell them that we didn't fight for our NHS? The most efficient and life-saving, absolutely amazing healthcare service in the world. Are we really going to let them take it from us? No. This government is a minority government. It is a weak government. The NHS is the biggest issue in this country and we can force a U-turn. We need an uprising, an NHS uprising, involving the majority of people in this country to save our NHS.